Shalom everyone. I'm Lieutenant Colonel in the Reserves Jonathan, an Israeli spokesperson, and I'm here to give all of you, our subscribers, a, an update about the situation in Israel on this third day of fighting of the war against Hamas. The situation in Israel is that the, in the south there is still fighting. I am happy to say that the IDF has been able to establish control over all of our communities and the Israeli bases, that the border is now mended and shut, and that we are controlling uh, the border. There are attempts by Hamas and the Islamic Jihad to send additional terrorists into Israel, but those attempts so far are being stopped. The biggest, I'd say, factor that is shaping events is the number of Israeli casualties from this monstrous attack by Hamas almost three days ago. Three days ago, on a Saturday morning, Hamas terrorists were able to infiltrate into Israel. Hundreds of terrorists got into Israel and assaulted Israeli communities in a way that has never been done before. The result of these attacks were more than 900 killed Israelis. That's a number that has never been said or mentioned before because it's never happened before, that so many Israelis were killed in one day. Unprecedented in our history. What was also unprecedented was the level of brutality and how Hamas terrorists joyfully went into Israel and executed, no other word, executed Israeli civilians in their homes as they were seeking shelter in their bomb shelters. And there are gruesome pictures. Some of them were here on YouTube and some of them have already been taken down of elderly people executed in their shelters, of women and children being held at gunpoint and then dragged off into the Gaza Strip, and of armed gunmen, armed terrorists, firing and murdering Israeli civilians at point blank. The images are very graphic and uh, for those who haven't seen them, I'm not sure that it's a good thing to see because some atrocities cannot be unseen. What followed has been three days of fighting and it took us more than 48 hours to re-establish re control over southern Israel. We have rushed hundreds of thousands of Israeli soldiers to the south. Many of them are reserve soldiers who are not in the military every day, but have been called up for duty. And they are now getting ready to execute the next tasks that the IDF will do. To make things even more complicated and sensitive, Hamas abducted into the Gaza Strip dozens of Israelis both civilians and military, many of them alive and a few are presumed dead already. This is also unprecedented in our history, that so many Israelis are held at gunpoint in the hands of murderous terrorist organizations. They're inside the Gaza Strip and needless to say Hamas and the Islamic Jihad are responsible and will bear the full responsibility for their safety. To make it even worse, many of these Israelis are dual have dual nationalities. There are Americans, French, Germans, and Israelis from many other countries that are now in the hands of Hezbollah, making this not only an Israeli event and an atrocity, but also something that many countries around the world will have to deal with. Over the last hours, 
Israel has been striking Hamas targets in the Gaza Strip and striking them with great force. We have struck almost 2,000 targets in the Gaza Strip and we will continue to strike these targets. Now, which targets are we striking? We are striking Hamas's military infrastructure. That is what we're aiming at. The unfortunate, sad situation in the Gaza Strip is that ever since Hamas took control, almost 20 years ago, of the Gaza Strip, they have been building their military infrastructure underneath their civilians. And being the cowards that they are, they're using their own civilians as human shields hoping that the fact that they have built their tunnels and bunkers and rocket launchers and command posts and everything else that they have in the Gaza Strip, all of that they've built it under their civilians, they're hoping that their civilians will defend them against our attacks. I can assure you that we are not looking to strike civilians. That is not our business or our aim and it never was. What we are doing over Gaza now is striking Hamas and its military infrastructure and we will continue to do so until we achieve the aims that the Israeli government has tasked us to achieve and that is to make sure that Hamas at the end of this war will not have the military ability to threaten or kill or terrorize any Israeli civilian ever again. These are very difficult days for Israel. It is perhaps, arguably, the worst starting point in any of our wars, considering the amount of casualties and dead Israelis, dead and wounded Israelis that uh, we started this situation with. But Israel is united, strong, committed, and we're already seeing beautiful acts of brotherhood in Israel, of families helping other families find a new home, a temporary home, as they are evicted or evacuated from their homes in southern Israel, of Israeli citizens joining together, pooling their resources in order to buy food, clothing, and equipment needed for those families as they are relocated temporarily. Hundreds of thousands of Israelis that are uh, taking money out of their pocket and sending packages of food and equipment to the hundreds of thousands of Israeli soldiers that are now in the south, busy fighting the enemies, and many other things of beautiful displays of camaraderie and brothership. And that is exactly what Israel is. This is perhaps our darkest hour but we will emerge from it victorious at the end of this war. And Hamas, what's left of it, and the world will know that if you dare attack Israel, as Hamas did, and if you dare kill our civilians, as Hamas did, you will pay a price like no one has ever paid before. I hope that all of you watching will share this content that you find it useful and that you will stay updated. Make sure that you get notified on whenever we release new information. We will continue to do this here and our other platforms on Twitter, on Facebook, Instagram, and even TikTok for those of you who are there. And we will disseminate trustworthy, verified information for you to be able to use. And I call on everybody watching here to be very, very suspicious on any information that immediately tries to blame Israel for the situation in Gaza. It should be abundantly clear that Hamas is to blame and bears responsibility for everything happening now from the first minute that they crossed our border, invaded into our communities, and massacred our civilians. They bear responsibility for what's happening. Wherever you are, 
If you're in Israel or overseas watching this, I hope that you're safe. And I also hope that if you have the chance, show your support for Israel. Show that you care that a free, democratic and sovereign state has been brutally attacked by a terrorist organization. Show that you stand up for what's right, for Israel's right to defend itself without ifs and buts, but to defend itself and its civilians against monsters, no other word, monsters that have attacked our civilians. And if you believe that is right, then stand up for Israel, show your support, and make sure to fight the media battle for Israel and not allow Israel to be slandered or unfairly criticized for our actions as we defend our civilians. I wish you the best, stay safe, stay informed, and I hope we keep in touch. Shalom from Tel Aviv.